So, the project's opened. And here we have a scene that I've created, and it's an amalgamation of both asset store assets and assets I've created, such as this uh, lovely custom Unity toaster. And this scene pretty much encompasses a lot of the new features found within the HD render pipeline. So, as I mentioned earlier, what if we wanted to upgrade the project? Well, we would do this through Package Manager. And the way that we access Package Manager is we go up to Window and Package Manager. And it presents us with a window. So we have two tabs. We have In Project and we have All. The In Project shows us everything that's in our project currently. If we were to go to the All tab, I can now start to see everything that I could add to my project. So here we have the HD Render Pipeline. I've already got it installed, but you would install it this way. So how do I take my recently installed pipeline and implement it? Well, I want to go to my project's graphical settings. So the way I do that is I go up to Edit, Project Settings, Graphics. So within the Inspector module, I can see we have an option called the Scriptable Render Pipeline Settings. And once you've downloaded your pipeline, you would click on the button on the far right and you would assign the HD Render Pipeline asset. So now let's dive into some of the features. Lighting in the High Definition Render Pipeline has moved to using a system called Physical Light Units. Now Physical Light Units mean that the units are based off real world measurable values, similar to what you would see when browsing or shopping for light bulbs. Light emitters such as Directional Light use a luminosity value called Lux, while light emitters such as point lights, line lights or area lights use lumens. This was introduced because the directional light in most cases was the most powerful light emitter in the scene. When a lux value starts to decrease, it becomes less accurate, which is why when using smaller light emitters, like the line light, it's generally better to use lumens as the light value is more accurate to what you would find in the real world for such small values. So the line light maintains a seamless constant light output from a custom line length. I can determine the line length using this value under shape. As I decrease it, you can see that the line shrinks, and as I increase it, the line expands. So these lights are commonly used for animated films and they achieve realistic looking lighting. And I find it seems to add some kind of like filmic quality to your scene. And that's why I like using line lights. Another cool thing is we have a temperature gauge and I can start to determine the light outputted through temperature. So I can decrease it from left to right. As it gets red, that means the light's getting cooler. And as it becomes more blue, the light's getting hotter. Of course, like I mentioned earlier, we have an intensity and this is under lumens and it's currently set to 126. Through research, I kind of figured out the average for most lights of this caliber are between 175 and 500 lumens. For the context of this scene, uh, 126 seems to work best. So here we have the Planar Reflection Probe. And for any of you that have used the standard reflection probe, this will seem very familiar to you. The Planar Reflection Probe is used to generate realistic looking reflections on a surface, in this case, a kitchen worktop. Within the inspector, I have a whole load of influence settings. We have a box size, and this will determine the influence bound by a box, box offset, influence fades, influence settings so I can determine the weight or the multiplier. Just to show, if I click this little modify base shape button, I can start to determine the bounding box. So as I decrease it, the reflections disappear, and as I increase it, the reflections come back, creating nice reflections on the surface. We have a new cool feature called the volume settings. And what the volume settings do is they allow you to visually alter your environment preferences, adjusting elements such as your visual environment, procedural sky, HD shadow settings, and even enables you to create custom profiles and switch between them. If I were to zoom in on the inspector, we have our HD shadow settings, and we have this value called max distance, and this will determine the quality of the shadows depending on how far away you are from those particular shadows. We have your visual environment, and we can start to determine the sky type. We have two options, HDRI sky, which I'm currently using, or procedural sky. So this volume is managed by creating a game object and adding a corresponding component, just like you would when creating a volume for the post-processing stack version two. In the high definition render pipeline, there will be one present in your hierarchy by default. And of course we have post-processing. Um, I've done quite a lot of post-processing on this, including stuff like color grading, bloom, vignette, 
ambient occlusion, and I've added a bit of auto exposure as well. The high definition render pipeline has a really cool new feature, and this is the new debugging window. And this allows us to view our scene with unique preset options. Let me show you. So to access my debugging window, I wanna go up to window, general, and render pipeline debug. So the debugging window allows me to pick apart different layers of my scene and see it for its segregated parts. This is incredibly useful as I can see where particular components are influencing my scene. These debugging tools further empower artists to investigate any graphical problems within their content. You can use this feature to figure out if you have artifacts within a scene, such as anomalies of why particular sections are looking too dark, or a texture isn't performing as expected. We have material. This allows me to segregate a particular material type and its components within my scene and show it to me within my viewport display. So dropping down, I want to go to lit because all of my materials within my project are being influenced by light. And you can see it gives me quite an expansive list of different materials, ranging from opacity all the way down to transmittance masks. Although a lot of these would be useful for users and developers who use quite complicated materials, again, we wanted to make sure that this feature was accessible to both novice and expert users, but we do have some rather familiar material names, such as base color, specular occlusion, normal, smoothness, ambient occlusion. If I pick normal, my viewport now changes according to normal maps applied to my materials within my scene. So of course we can see the tiles within the back. We have our stores, which have a noise normal map applied to them. And we have our wall, which you can't really see, but it has a noise normal map applied. And the same would be said for base color and ambient occlusion. So let's go to base color. And I can see my scene for its base color, rather than it being influenced by light, I can see all the textures quite clearly. And the same could be said for ambient occlusion as well. And I can see all of the ambient occlusion maps applied to my scene. Moving down, we have lighting. And this is where I think the feature comes into its own. So watch this. So at first this can look pretty daunting. I remember feeling exactly the same way. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is override my albedos and normal colors. And you'll see why I do this later. So if I go to my debugging modes, I'm only really gonna focus on the top two options, diffuse lighting and specular lighting. Like I mentioned earlier, I can now see how my light is influencing my scene. With all the materials and lighting combined, I find it quite hard to interpret and understand how many reflections are actually occurring within my scene. Even I struggle and simply turn up the specular material and don't really think about what it's doing to my scene. Well, this allows me to check according to my preferences. I think it's a really, really cool feature. The amazing thing about the scriptable render pipeline architecture is that you can make your own debugging effects. You can start to extend certain preferences and fuse elements together to create custom debugging tools which are tailored to your requirements. Similar to what was shown at the GDC talk I mentioned earlier, in which the developers created custom sky occlusion modes, which showed how the directional light reacted with the rural environment. The thing that blew my mind when I was investigating this is that the modes can be accessed once the project is running. You can see these modes on platforms such as Xbox or even PlayStation. So now let's grab an asset from the asset store and put it within my scene. So this pan doesn't look quite right. And this is Unity telling me that the material is not compatible with the HD render pipeline. And the material needs upgrading in order to access the whole variety of new material inspector features. I can see on the right hand side under its shader, it says standard. So I know this needs upgrading. So from 2018.1, Unity has a built in material conversion function to convert any Unity built-in standard or unlit material to a high definition render pipeline version. But for other types of material, such as custom shaders, they simply won't work. It's something to keep in mind. So let's access the conversion tool. If we go to edit, render pipeline, and I'm gonna focus on the top two options. So the top option converts all materials in a scene to be compatible with the high definition render pipeline. The second, does the same thing, but allows me to choose what materials I want to convert. So I'm going to click the top option and Unity will provide me with a tip saying to back up my project. And I'm going to click proceed. And there we go. Easy as that. The materials have now been converted to the high definition render pipeline material. And I can see that within my expector. If I go down to shader, I can see that it set it to HD render pipeline lit. 
And if I were to go under the render pipeline, I have a whole list of different options I can choose, ranging from decals to unlit. And of course, exactly the same as the legacy version, if I were to select unlit, it's now created the material that will not be influenced by light. 